So the next part of our gaming extravaganza is that we're going to start learning how to actually solve some of these mazes. And I've chosen a very basic one that I borrowed from another teacher for us to start. Right underneath this video, you should see your own blank copy of this exact same screen. If you don't, please make sure that you use the contact information that I have included in this adventure, and I will be more than happy to help you figure out what's going on. And you're going to notice that if you open it by default, a couple of the lines are already given to us. And again, this is a really basic maze. It's asking us to go from here to here. So we're obviously gonna do a little something like this if it's on paper, right? We're gonna kinda go around and we're gonna end up right there at the end. And again, a couple of the lines have already been drawn for us. I want us to start from scratch though, so let's get rid of those lines. And I'm gonna show you how to recreate them in a second. So we're gonna go over here to where it says X. And we're just going to X out those equations, which means now those lines are going to disappear. And I'm going to show you exactly where those lines came from. Another adjustment you might want to make, you don't have to, but I know it might make it easier for you, is that by default, you're going to notice that the scale right here kind of doesn't, each little box doesn't go up by one, right? So because you've got a zero and a two right here, you know that one is going to be like halfway in between there. If that throws you off and you'd prefer to have a label for every number, that's a really easy fix. All you have to do is go over here to the wrench icon, which I'm going to do. And where it says X axis and step, we're just going to type a one next to the label. And that's going to add a label for every one instead of like every other one. So now you can really clearly see exactly where the one, two, three, where all the different numbers are. We're gonna do the same thing for the Y axis as well. We're gonna go right there to the step button next to the Y, and we're gonna type in a one again. So that, that way all your numbers are very clearly labeled and that just might make it a little bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is start the path of that circle. So the circle is gonna wanna make its way from here down to about there, right? So hopefully we remember from our previous video that in order to make a vertical line, you are gonna have to type an equation over here that starts with an x equals. That is how you're going to make a vertical line. Well, x equals what? What number are we going to put in there? Remember that we type in the number that corresponds to where that vertical line would hit the x axis. So the x axis is right there. So if we drew a vertical line right there, it would go through the 1. So we are going to type x equals 1 right here into the equation editor. Now we've got a little bit of a problem, especially since we're trying to solve a maze, because the way we have it typed in here right now, that line is going all the way down. It's actually run off the map. When we really kind of wanted to stop make a little right turn and go in that direction eventually. So we've got to do something to basically cut this line off so that it's not going off the map in that direction. We need to get it to stop right about here. So that is where the new concept comes in that I'm going to introduce you to. We are going to add in what's called a constraint. That means that we're going to tell the line, hey, this is where you need to stop. So allow me to demonstrate. This is how you type in a constraint. So we again, we want the line to stop right here at the 1. And that 1 falls along the y axis, right? So that means that we want that line to go no lower than 1. So that means we want our y values to be greater than or equal to 1. Because that way, all the values that are down here underneath the 1 are going to like cease to exist. Because we're telling the computer, hey, I want you to use this equation 
x equals 1, but I don't want the line to go any lower than 1. And in order to do that, we're telling it, remember the alligator eats the bigger thing, right? So we are telling by using our little alligator here, we're saying that we want all the y values to be either greater than or equal to one. And this is how you type in a constraint. And I'm going to kind of zoom in on there for a second on that box. And you can use either the, um, keyboard on your computer or Desmos's keyboard to type in the little curly Q brackets. So those are should be right next to your P button on a regular keyboard. They're the little brackets that are at the top. Okay, so not the ones that look like this. Okay, the ones that kind of, I can't draw these, but the ones that have like the little curly Q bracket. And we're going to type in what's called the constraint that we want the y values to be greater than or equal. And what I did is I just typed the greater, I typed the little, to get that to pop up using a regular keyboard, I, I clicked the alligator button, I typed the button that looks like that on my keyboard, and then I typed the equal to sign, and that makes it pop up as the greater than or equal to sign on the Desmos calculator, or Desmos actually has a keyboard. Um, let me zoom out so you can see where that is. The Desmos keyboard right here also has that same button. So if I were to open that up, you could get to the greater than or equal button by clicking that. So you can either do that, or since I'm zoomed in, which takes away the keyboard, I can literally just type the alligator and the equal to buttons on my actual keyboard. So again, we want the Y values to be higher than one. And then I'm going to type the curly Q brackets on the other side. And when I zoom out, dun, 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 you will see that now the line stops going down right there at one. If you haven't already tried that yourself on the blank graph that you have underneath this video, please try that now. Try typing it in there. Make sure that you're able to duplicate the steps that I just did. If not, you can you know rewind this part or you can reach out for me for help. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the second part. So now that we've got our line stopped, we're gonna need to make a sharp right and we're need to gonna, oops, I probably went a little too far there. So we're gonna need to make a sharp right, and we're gonna wanna stop right about there so that we've got room for it to go up and around. So we need to make a horizontal line now. We had a vertical line, now we need a horizontal line. And recall from the previous video that we need a horizontal line. In order to make a horizontal line, that is a y equals equation. And what goes on the other side of that equation? Well, it's the spot that that line would hit the y-axis. So if this line continued right here, it would if, we, if it went straight that way, it would hit the 1 on the y-axis. So in the equation editor, I am going to make a horizontal line by saying y equals one. So you see that now we have a horizontal line that goes straight through the one. Again, here's our problem with the maze though, because if I zoom in, you can kind of see, right? I'm gonna outline it because the blue is kind of matching with the blue a little bit. So here's the line and it kind of goes right through the obstacles when what we're gonna want it to do eventually is stop right about here and then go up right so that we can get to the end so you guessed it we're gonna have to put a limit or a constraint on how long that line is so where we really want it to be we want it to be like right about from here to here I would say so we want it to fall from 1 to 6 on the x-axis we don't want it to go any farther this direction which means we don't want it to be any smaller than 1 
but we don't want it to go any more in this direction, which means we don't want it to be any bigger than six. So how are we going to accomplish that? We are gonna add another constraint. So this time we're gonna add two constraints. And the first constraint, I'm just gonna draw it here for a second. Um, so again, those curly Q brackets, I cannot draw those. And we want our X value, again, to be either greater or equal to one, because we wanna like cut it off so that it doesn't go in this direction. So we want it to be bigger than one, but we also want it to stop once it gets to six. So that means that we want the X to be less than or equal to six. So we've got those two constraints that we are gonna type into the box. Okay, so I just zoomed in here. So now you can see I've got the brackets. So I want X to be greater. So I hit the alligator button and then the equal button to make greater than or equal to one close the brackets, and now another set of brackets because I want X to be less than or equal button to six. I'm going to now zoom out so you can see what happened. And voila, we've got that line and it ended up bigger than one and smaller than six. If you haven't already tried this along with me, please try this at home. And um, in the next video, I'm going to give you, so, or actually what I would like you to do right now is pause the video and try to make a line using the examples that we've just provided that's going to make the line go up and stop right there. So I want you to pause the video. Take a moment to get an idea of what you might do. Try typing it into the box right there, and then restart the video when you're ready to see whether or not you did it correctly. All right, so hopefully you have done what I asked you to do. You paused the video, and you tried to use the Desmos graphing calculator, the editor, in order to make this line right here. I am going to show you how I did it. So again, oops, sorry, I just zoomed badly. All right, sorry about that, y'all. So we know that I want to make a vertical line. So a vertical line means that I'm gonna click in the equation editor and it's gonna start with an X equals. And because I want the vertical line to go this way, which means it would be going through the six on the X axis, because that's the number six right there. That means I'm gonna type in X equals six. And I've got the line, but then I need to add the constraint so that it'll start here and end somewhere about there because I don't want it to go in both directions because eventually I want it to go that way, right? <coughs> so because I'm talking about how far I want it to go up and down, that means I need to look at the Y axis. So I don't want it to be any higher than six on the Y axis and I don't want it to be any lower than one on the Y axis. So that means that I want my Y value to be greater than or equal to one because I want it to go up, like go above the one, but I also want the Y to be less than or equal to six because I want it to stop right there at the six. So I'm gonna type those two constraints and remember the way to do that is with the, so the curly Q brackets, I want Y to be greater or equal to one. I'm gonna close the curly Q brackets. And I want Y to be less than or equal to six. Close them. And if I zoom out, you see now I have the line exactly where I want it. It's now stopped right here so that now I can do the next step, 
which I want to do is to veer to the right and go right, stop right about here. So I want it to start here and I want it to stop here. So pause the video, take a moment to try yourself on your own little blank graph and see, or your own blank maze, I should say, and see whether or not you can get that line. Um, I'm going to assume that you have paused the video, you've tried it yourself, you have an equation typed right down here, so now I'm going to show you what I personally did. So first of all, because I know that I want a horizontal line this time, that means it's going to be a y equals, and I want it to start here, which means it's going to enter which means I want it to start right here at six. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. First, first things first, sorry. So I want it to be a horizontal line, which means I want it to be a Y. So I need to look and see if this line did continue all the way out, where would it hit on the Y axis? So it would hit right there at Y equals six. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type into the box y equals 6. And the same problem that I've had every other time, right? The line is there, but it's going all the way across, which doesn't help me for the maze. I want it to start here, and I want it to stop right about there so that it doesn't run into the wall, and then it, we can go up and finish the maze that way. So now I need to look and see exactly where I want it to be like where I want it to start and where I want it to stop. So if I look down, I want it to start on the x-axis right there because I'm, now I'm looking and seeing like as I'm traveling from left to right, where do I want it to go? So I want it to start here and I want it to stop right about here. Oops, my bad. I want it to start here and I want it to stop right here. So that means that I want it to go between six and 10 and again, because I'm looking at left to right, that means I'm looking at the x-axis. So the constraint that I'm going to type means I want my y, or I'm sorry, no I don't. I want my x value to be bigger than six because it's starting right here at the six. So I want it to be greater than or equal to six, but I want it to stop right here at 10 so I also want my x value to be less than or equal to 10. So those are the two constraints I'm gonna type into the box. So here we go, curly Q bracket, x is greater than or equal to six. Close the brackets. Another curly Q bracket, x is less than or equal to where did I want it to go? Oh yeah, I wanted it to stop at 10. Close the curly key bracket. So you can see, now I have that line exactly the way I wanted it, and it just goes from here to here. So now I would like you to pause the video, take a moment and try to decide how you might get the line to continue going from where we left off. So from here up to here. So that we can kind of go around and get to the finish line so pause the video try that yourself i'm going to assume that you've paused the video and that you are ready to watch now um the way i did it so the first thing to keep in mind is that it's a horse or i'm sorry ah it is a vertical line the screen line is vertical which means it's going to be an x equals equation so I need to look and see if the little line were to continue all the way through the x-axis. Exactly where would it go? Well, it would go to x equals 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an equation that says x equals 10. We've got the same problem that we did before, right? Because the line is going in the wrong, like it's going too far. So we want it to start here and we want it to end right about here so that then we can go in that direction. So now, because I'm talking about the vertical distance, that means I need to see like where along the Y axis do I want it to be. So if I kind of make my little imaginary line over here, it means I don't want it to go any higher than 10 and I don't want it to go any lower 
than 6 because I want the line just to go right here in between 6 and 10. So that means, again, because I'm talking about the up and down, the vertical distance, I'm talking about the y-axis. So I want my y-axis to be greater than or equal to 6, but I also want my y to be less than or equal to 10 because I want it to be higher than 6, but I want it to be lo lower than 10, so it needs to be in between. So if I type my constraints, so curly Q, I want my y to be greater than or equal to 6. Close the curly Q bracket. And I want the y to be less than or equal to 10. Close the curly Q bracket. And as you can see, now I have the line exactly where I wanted it. So we're almost there to the end, guys. Pause the video. See if you can figure out how you might make the next part of the line. Oops, I made that too long. Because we're going to want it to go kind of like up and over like this so that it's going to hit that block in just a second. So we kind of want it to go like over and then halfway in between those two bricks right there. So pause the video, try it out yourself. See if you can figure out how to get that line to go from there to there. And I will be right back with you. I'm going to assume you paused the video and now you know what you're doing. So because this is a horizontal line, I know it's going to be a y equals. And to figure out the rest of the equation, I'm going to make kind of like my little imaginary line here. And I see that on the y axis, it would hit 10. So the first thing I'm going to type is y is equal to 10. Once again, I have a straight horizontal line, but it goes way too far in both directions. I want it to start here, and I want it to end right about here. So I need to look at where those numbers are. So because we're talking about the horizontal distance now, that means I need to look down here at this part. So I want it to start right about 10 and end halfway in between let's see if I zoom in here what is that that's halfway in between 13 and 14 so that's like 13.5 so my two inequalities that I'm going to want to grab to write are going to be I want my and we're talking about the X because we're talking about the X axis right here so I want my X value to be greater than or equal to 10 because I want it to be bigger than 10 but I don't want it to be any bigger than 13.5 so I want it to go in between those two so I'm going to add those constraints so x is greater than or equal to 10 and x is less than or equal to, oops, I did not do that right, less than or equal to 13.5. See if I estimated that about right? Yep, I sure did. So now I've got that line. And for the grand finale, dun dun dun, dun we need to get from here to here. So pause the video, try the very last one on your own. And let's see if we can get that little stretch of line that we just need to get to the finish line. I'm going to assume you've paused the video and that you are ready to try to see yourself whether or not you did it right. So because this is a vertical line, that means it's going to be an X equals. Because it's a vertical line, we're going to imagine it like extended through here, right? Where on the X axis would it hit? It would be hitting at about 13 and a half, 13.5. So... My, my last equation for this experiment is going to be x equals 13.5. So I've got my vertical line that I need, and I want it to, but of course it's too long, right? So I needed to start here where we left off and stop here. 
So because we're talking about a vertical distance, I need to check my y-axis. So we need it to stop at 10, or start at 10, I'm sorry, and then not go any lower than 1 on the y-axis. So that means our y-value needs to be less than or equal to 10, because we don't want it to go any higher than 10, and y needs to be greater than or equal to 1, because we don't want it to go any lower, like blast through that little block and not stop at the finish line. So I'm going to add those last two constraints, curly brackets, y is less than or equal to 10, and curly brackets, y is greater than or equal to 1. And yay, we have successfully completed the maze just using horizontal and vertical lines with constraints.